it's just never been seen in the global reserve currency, right? Um, well, except perhaps maybe when Rome did, did their thing, but that was a long, long time ago. So um, there's no doubt in my mind that fiat is failing. Now, the, the trickier question, in my opinion, is, is that a two years from now event or a 15 years from now event? I mean, I doubt it's 15. I, I just can't see you know, the math, as Greg points out, so eloquently for our mutual friend Greg Foss. It, the math is just, it's, it's unrelenting, compelling, compounding, et cetera. So, you know, I, I think it's much shorter than 15. I think it's probably much shorter than 10. I probably put the boundary conditions as between two and eight with years I'm talking about now, with five as kind of my most likely, you know, this, this thing will really have cracked up by within five years. So you think that basically mid to late 2020s is That's right. probably. I think between 2025 and 2030, it's going to be all over for fiat. It's going to fiat. That's that's fiat, a that's a bold claim. Fiat, yeah, I think it's fiat's going to fail. Yeah. Um, you know, and and you know, but but think about it. Think about how when it's 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 you know, and, and Preston does a great job with this. It's 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 kind of engineering and critical state stuff, right? I mean, one day the Soviet Union was, right? And then it was not. And then it was not. I mean, it just you, you know, and I mean one you know, it, I mean ice, it, you know, it, below thirty two degrees, ice is ice. At thirty four degrees, enough time. Ice is water, you know what I mean, and, and so, so there's gonna there's gonna come a tipping point here, where and, and this is you know we've all you know you guys know these brothers, brothers, this is Gresham's law, right? When people and this and I've studied a lot of hyperinflations and, and you know read all the books and so forth on this topic, the issue what creates a hyperinflation is when people realize that the policy of the government and the situation mathematically that we're in will never allow them to reverse inflation and money printing and in fact it will naturally have to accelerate and then what happens just the way we're all hardwired if we're out running around on the savannah and a lion shows up and it looks like it's going to come eat us you know we run like hell to avoid getting eaten well if you've got fiat money savings you know and fiat money assets well you know financial assets bonds and, and stocks particularly you know you realize holy shit you know this is, i mean i gotta get out of this damn stuff you know and i gotta get out of it now and so and, and then everyone sees the signals, and the, and the pricing is the clue, right? I mean, imagine you woke up, imagine we all woke up one morning, and gold was now $10,000 an ounce, and Bitcoin was at $200,000 a coin, right? I mean, ima and imagine that happened pretty quickly. What, you know, don't you think the panic would be, oh, you know, some people say, well, it's too high, it's going to come back down. Others might say, no, that 200 grand is cheap, that thing's going to 2 million. Give me some of that. And, and, and then, you, you see what I'm saying? And then, and by the way, Bonds would be cratering, interest rates would be going up, stocks would be cratering, and 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 you get you you get a mass event of Gresham's law. Get me out of this burning theater that's called fiat. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's you know we're all in there. The price of Bitcoin and gold are yelling fire, fire, fire. They can't stop printing it, and we're all going oh shit. You know, I, I, you know I got any savings? I got to get them out of this shit because it's going to become worthless. And that's what happens. That's how it happened in Venezuela. That's how it happened in Weimar. That's how it happens everywhere. So, you know, that, in my opinion, that's in our future. Sadly, that's in our future. Unless we do a, a, a controlled monetary reset, you know, something akin to what Roosevelt did in the 30s. I mean, he didn't do it perfectly, and I'm sure we would fuck it up too. But, <laughs> but, but the point is, there, there is, you know, they could, they could truncate that. Seeing that coming, somebody, you know, and, and in fact, we, there are a lot of us who believe and argue that they may try to truncate that with CBDCs, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think we're already there to a certain extent, though, because I don't think any of us can find a way at which we can avoid continual debasement and continue printing. And, and well, I mean, even your in, point in of our community, but the problem yeah. is our community, we're still, you know, as, I mean, we all amongst ourselves, you know, this is totally obvious. <laughs> we completely get it. You know, I mean, everybody should be buying this stuff hand over fist. But have you been out and talked to normies recently? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, I, I interact with a lot of normies. And, well, yeah, I, oh, I, yeah, whatever. You know, they don't get it. I mean, yeah, gosh, this inflation's kind of high. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, I guess to be, to be clear, I, I, I think the math is there, but I, I agree with you. That I don't think the understanding is there. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I guess then the only question becomes: At what point do humans become logical? And well, <laughs> and, I, and I think, <laughs> it, I that. think it's, I think it's when they get hit over the head. Mm -hmm. You know, when they, when they, when, when the gasoline is ten dollars a gallon. Do you know what I mean? Um, when well, it'd, it'd be higher than that. Yeah, 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 yeah. higher than ten dollars. Well, well obviously, but yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, and, and when it's it's the slope of the curve. I mean, you know, people will start to realize, you know, oh my God. I mean, 
I mean, look at how, look, I mean, it, you know, there was, a, there was a miniature version in this country of Gresham's Law, you know, on, on the COVID whole thing, okay? I mean, in other words, people realized, hey, there's a lot of inflation coming. Um, interest rates are extremely low. I can get a 30-year fixed rate for 3%, and they were, they were kind of putting on the Hugo Stinnis trade, which is, I'm going to buy a house, you know? This is a no-brainer. All i got to pay is 3% interest to, to get this asset that will be here for the next 30 or 40 years. And, you know, and, and, and so you, you saw all these bidding wars, and, you know, I mean, it was crazy. And housing prices went up 30% a year. I mean, that was a small microcosm, you know, and, and, but people here were doing with cars and trucks. I mean, you know, and, and some of it was supply chain related in the cars and truck instance. But, you know, people were like, wow, you know, I'd rather have stuff than this money. And especially back then. When, when the government, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, were willing to loan you 30% money at 3%, I mean, or 30-year money at 3%. I mean, okay, l let me get this straight. My house is going to appreciate between uh, between 5 and 30% a year, and all I have to pay is 3% interest on that? Yeah, I'll do sign that. Sign me up. Yeah, sign me up, right? Yeah. You, you talked about the historical precedence of hyperinflationary events, and I yeah. think most people, and perhaps even a lot of Bitcoiners, have not done the reading that you have on this right. topic. And I suppose my question is this. When I think of that, it becomes pretty clear to me that when hyperinflation sets in and be everyone cumulatively begins to realize, begins to realize yeah. yeah, that's when asset prices just get bid up towards infinity. Right. It's called a crack-up boom. Right? Yeah, a crack-up boom. Right. My question is, how would you explain to somebody – because first you have to understand that, but then you have to understand how Bitcoin comes into the picture because I think this time – Perhaps what would occur is that it's a crack up boom towards Bitcoin. Yes. So the oh, dollar absolutely. goes down against all the assets. Yes. And then all the assets go down against the Bitcoin. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. One, look, I mean, Paul Tudor Jones said, and I believe it. Bitcoin is the fastest horse in the monetary debasement race. Okay. It's hmm. gonna it's gonna crush gold. It's gonna crush houses. It's gonna crush. But, you know, give me the choice: stocks, bonds, you know, gold, a house, Bitcoin. Well, okay. Bitcoin's, in my opinion, the best. Gold's probably the second best. The house is probably the third best. You know, bonds are probably the worst, and stocks are somewhere in the middle. I mean, in hyperinflation, stocks tend to go up a lot, uh, but not not in, in, in nominal terms, not in real terms. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, yeah, it, it's, um, it, you can just see, you can just see it and feel it coming, but, but you get these waves, and this is what tricks people, too. I mean, you know, we had this incredible wave, and I mean, look, at the end of 2021, I mean, I thought we were entering a crack-up boom. I mean, there were bidding wars for houses. Bitcoin was at 68000 or, you know, whatever. I mean, stocks were high. Bonds were high. I mean, I was like, holy shit. You know, this is it. It's happening right here, right now. Well, you know, the Federal Reserve probably realized that, too. And when Bitcoin, that's the other thing. When Bitcoin went from the 5 to 10 range in the 20... 5 to 10,000, yeah. Yeah, 5 to 10,000 range in the 20-ish area, and it went to 50 or 55, I mean... You think alarm bells weren't going off in every central bank in the world? I mean, they were looking at each other, going, "Oh fuck, this is really a problem," because they managed to they managed to kill gold. Was always the canary in the coal mine. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, you, yeah. You're gold. You're you're. Yeah, go, go, yeah so I'd love gold, to talk about that difference. Gold, yeah, gold go ahead. Gold was always the canary in the coal mine that warned of monetary debasement and inflation, and that's why Gibson's paradox. You know, Robert Rubin, Bill Clinton. You know, James Carville, all those guys, they realized they had to print paper gold to hold the gold price down if they wanted to print a lot of money and grow the economy, and they did it. And so they, they in effect, the fire alarm of gold got suppressed. And there's a ton of data to support. This is not a debatable fact. There's 100 paper, gold is a big, gold is a big game of musical chairs. There are 100 paper claims for every ounce of gold that exists in the world. And so... And a lot of those paper claims are in an ETF or somebody who thinks they own gold, but when they say, give me the ounces, they're not there, okay? And so, you know, we could wake up one day and the COMEX and all these different paper versions of gold, you know, they say, sorry, force majeure, we're cash settling. The price on Friday was $2,500 an ounce. We'll send you $2,500. And we would all wait for the physical market to open up, and the physical market might open up and the first price might be $20,000 an ounce, right? I mean, basically, the paper market just failed, okay? And so, you know, Bitcoin came along, and it snuck up on them, and they didn't pay attention, they didn't kill it. And, you know, as, as I think it was Luke Roman who coined the phrase so eloquently, he said, you know, this is the only fire, this is the only monetary fire alarm that was working, you know, that was actually telling people how much inflation there was out there, mm -hmm. right? And it's really great. And, I mean, because, you know, Again, going from five or ten thousand to fifty thousand in less than a year, a year and a half, I guess it was something like that. 
I mean, that's pretty stunning. And it's still at 30,000. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, all, all the time people make fun of me because like, oh, well, how, how's your Bitcoin trade doing? How are your Bitcoin stocks okay. doing or whatever? Yeah. And, and <laughs> it, it's like, it's still at 30,000. It's the best performing financial asset ever in the history of mankind. Bitcoin is incredible and it's incredibly important, which is why it means a lot that you're watching this video and you're taking the time. I do this because I believe it is a really, really important innovation that we've discovered a way to not have a single point of failure at global base layer money. See, fiat money, political currency units, and gold, all other forms of money up to this point in history have had a single point of failure. This has been the largest monetary problem in human history for the last 4,000 years. And now we have Bitcoin, and Bitcoin solves that single point of failure problem. And now, therefore, we have a new single point of failure problem, and that is how do we custody and store that Bitcoin properly for the long term in a safe and secure way that brings peace of mind. That's why I work at the Bitcoin Advisor. If you were to be hit by a bus, does your spouse, do your kids, do your loved ones and beneficiaries know how to access your Bitcoin? Do you have a proper self-custody storage method to where there is no single point of failure? Not from yourself, not from your seed device, not from where your seed phrase is stored. Have you considered these questions? Have you gotten your UTXOs managed? Do you have jurisdictional arbitrage? Have you considered all the trust, taxes, and estate planning requirements that are associated with becoming a high net worth person? Because if you are buying Bitcoin right now, you are going to become a high net worth person. Are you prepared for the amount of Bitcoin you have to skyrocket in value 2x, 5x, 10x, or 100x eventually? That's the time horizon you should have, and so you need to be preparing today for that future. How are you going to custody your Bitcoin? How are you going to leave that Bitcoin for your future generations? Because after all, that's what we do this for, right? You're buying Bitcoin for your kids. You're buying it for your grandkids. And so I highly recommend you start thinking in those long-term time periods now because companies are coming, charities are coming, high net worth individuals are coming, and all of them are going to realize that having an allocation to a multi-sig uh, collateral custody vault is going to be something that is of serious consideration for them. So. Once you understand Bitcoin is a beautiful innovation for not having a single point of fa failure at the base layer currency, now you have to start seriously considering how do I have my custody stored where there is no single point of failure. Okay, if you want to learn more about that, please click the link in the description. I have dozens of pages of free educational content for you and videos. I'm happy to help in that free way. And then if you want individual help, I'm also happy to help you join the Bitcoin Advisor where you can be an ongoing client. You can become one of my clients and I'd be happy to help you in the years to come to make sure your Bitcoin's protected to where no matter what, no matter if thieves or scammers or spammers or yourself or your family or whoever, no matter whether it's due to theft or loss, misallocation, misplacement, or just uh, other mistakes, I'm happy to help you. And